Hey guys, Alexey from Ace5 Studios, and I'm gonna be talking about IK and FK and what it is, because you've probably noticed it on my characters, and you've probably noticed it on other rigs, and here I will try to explain what it is and how to use it during your animations. So, the simplest way to explain it is that this is IK, and then if you click here and you switch it over to FK, now this won't do anything, but now you can rotate in forward kinematics mode. You can rotate things like this. But what does it actually mean? So let's go to a different scene and set this up and go back to IK. Um, in this other scene, I have a very simple setup to explain. I have just two joints, well, three joints, two bones between them. And when you rotate something, in, like in 3D, you usually will affect everything that's a child of the object. So this object will rotate that object and this object rotate this object underneath it, and this one won't affect anyone. You can move it, and it'll affect that. It'll affect the, the connection here, but it's just because this is targeting this, so it's not really a connection. Um, so it's useful, but sometimes you want to be able to set where the final joint is, which is called IK. So if we turn on the IK tag, now you'll see that you can set a final joint, and then you can move the original joint and it'll connect between them. And this is the fundamental principle of IK. It's called inverse kinematic, where it goes backwards, where you have something at the end affecting the chain going backwards. That's why it's inverse instead of forward. So let's have a look in my scene how you will use this with 3D character rigs. Um, so uh, why IK was invented was basically in a nutshell to be able to do this. <laughs> because without IK, let's turn our IK off on these feet. If you want your character to squat or sit or do whatever, let's say we have him on frame zero, we have a keyframe, and on 20, we want him to squat down here. And you're like, well, that's not convenient. So let's key for now we have to keyframe all of these joints. I just selected all children and keyframe them here. And now when we're at frame, where is it? frame 20, so we have to bend these guys up to make the squat, and then we have to bend these guys down, and then we have to hope that we actually, and keyframe them, and then we have to hope that they actually uh, keyframed in the right, we'll see right now they're just too low, so we'll keyframe them, but then we have to get this guy and we have to move them along so they line up. And now when we do animation, well, we get some weird ass stuff going on. And it doesn't line up and it goes through the floor and then it comes back up and that's not useful. Now you'll notice this twisting thing that's going around. This is actually a problem with the gimbal lock. Uh, there's an easy way to fix this in Cinema 4D. Um, I've fixed this in most of my rigs, but, if it's, but you'll run into this problem a lot. So I'm gonna show you how to fix it. You wanna select this object and then this object and then you want to go shift C, select children. And then in the coordinates tab, you want to go Squatorian and you want to tick this. And now you won't get any rotations. I will do a separate tutorial explaining what this is. It's a kind of annoying problem. But anyway, point is, so you see when you do forward kinema kinematics, it doesn't, you know, you have to adjust all these things. And you're like, well, now you're sitting too low and I want it to sit a bit higher or forward or whatever. And then so you have to move them and then you have to adjust all the other frames and then you have to put intermediate frames and then this doesn't line up and it's just, it's a massive, it's not convenient to do this at all. So if we go Shift F3 and we delete all our keyframes and we turn back our IK and now we just keyframe them sitting here and then we go to frame 20 and we squat them down and ta-da, we have it animation beautiful right and you might be thinking well this is great why do you want to why would you want to switch to fk from ik i mean this clearly seems to work way better well because sometimes it doesn't sometimes let's turn off our animation here let's delete this again sometimes you want to animate the guy kicking or waving his hand and so let's say on frame zero we want the leg to be back here so we move it we rotate it forward so we don't have a knee flipping and we keyframe this, and then on frame 20, we want the leg to be out here, rotate it out, 
And then when we scroll through, we don't really get a kick. We get this weird kind of, I don't know what this is, but that's not how people kick. So we're like, well, we need an arc. So we in the middle, when we're here, we drag this down. And now you're like, well, now we have a animation. But if you notice, like, look, like the, the, the knee bends and unbends while it's going through. It's not a very natural move. Like it doesn't, this isn't how, how people kick. And also, again, if you want to change something, for example, if you want to move the body, if you want to say, if you want him to tilt a bit more with the kick, then you want it to be more of a roundhouse kick. Uh, the leg didn't move. So what we have to do is let's go back to our timeline, delete everything. Get our controllers, tilde X. This one, tilde X. Tilde X is a reset PSR, by the way. I say tilde X, but reset PSR. Very important command. You should bind it to a shortcut or drag it into your interface. Super reset PSR basically resets all your position, size, and rotation of any object. So if we move this object here, as you can see, its coordinates are all zeroed out. If we move it and then we go tilde X, it moves it back to where it's meant to be. So that's resetting the PSR. So let's turn off our IK controls. Let's go to FK. And now let's keyframe the leg back here and then the leg over here. And we have a perfect arc because in animation you want things to follow an arc. And here we have a perfect arc and it just moves. And if we want him to do a more roundhouse and swing a bit, you can keyframe it here. And then on this frame, you could tilt him out and you'll see that he does an animation and the legs move with that. I can just, you know, so it makes animation of some moves much easier. Stuff that otherwise would be an absolute pain in the ass to do. So and it also makes it more natural because you can also like do follow through. So if you can push this leg back and then when he kicks through, it'll be on frame 20, it'll be nice and straight. And you'll have a nice gradual move from this. You don't get any wonkiness of things moving up and down. So super useful there. And this is what the benefit of IK is. You can do the same. Also, for example, like when he's kicking animation, you really don't want the arms to be stuck in like, you want the arms to move with the body for the most part. You want them to rotate when the body rotates. So that way, switching these guys to FK also makes sense. So then if you have the body animating, for example, if back here we have the body like this, and then on frame 20, we have the body going forward, the arms will move with the body no matter where they are. So if they're here, let's move the arm down and then as it goes through, Let's, oops, let's make the arm also follow through with it. This is beautiful animation right here. I know it's wonderful. I'm pretty proud of it. As you see, you get nice follow through and everything moves together. And if you want to move the body, it will take the arms with it and the legs and you don't have to realign all these controllers, it still rotates. So this is the main benefit of IK. Um, sometimes you will have scenes where you will have IK and FK animations. For example, he walks and then he kicks or something like that. Uh, as far as possible, I recommend to split them into a different scene, like just cut them, you know, cut the camera move. So you have uh, one scene where he's using IK and the other scene where he's using FK. It'll save you a lot of headaches. Um, you can keyframe your IK to FK. You can, for example, go from, you can have him animating and then you can keyframe this going from where is, let's move this guy. So during his move, for example, he will start rotating and then here I want him to go back to FK. So where is my, I will animate him as IK and then I will, here I'll move him back to FK. I mean, sorry, to IK. So he moves back and this is a functional way. And for some things it works okay. Like, and now you can start animating the location of this guy, you can move him and here he was up here or whatever it is. So you can move this around and then you can keyframe animation like this. This is a functional approach. It's not too problematic. Um, but I would recommend trying to do something uh, a bit more creative. For example, let's delete all of these. Let's middle click on controllers, tilde X. Um, you can do kind of combined IKFK setups. So let's make this IK and this guy IK. Actually, that can be FK, whatever. 
So right now, if you move this, it moves around. And if you move the body, the arm doesn't move around with it. So what I suggest is selecting this object here, finding it with the S key, putting a null inside it, uh, use the reset PSR tilde X and call this shoulder FK, oops, got caps there, and move this guy outside of the hierarchy, so into the control folder. And get this guy and go shift C, parent, and it'll be set parent, double click on it and click the shoulder FK. And now you have this shoulder FK null, which is, so it makes it feel like the arm is FK, but you can still adjust um, IK controllers on it. And then when you select the shoulder, you can still animate it like this. So this is a pretty handy little technique because it lets you do a lot of the arcs, but it also lets you have IK control. And you can also use, you can also get this object and you can pair, you can PSR constrain it to other nulls in the scene, like I did in my uh, picking thing, picking objects up tutorial. So you can attach it to another null and it'll stick to that position. So you can, you know, if he wants to lean on something, you can move it there. And this is a very quick way to uh, combine the two. Also, I'd recommend making this like into a circle so you can actually click on it and select it and then animate it as you will. So this is a bit of manual reading on your part, but it's a very handy thing. Also, don't forget to, when you do this, don't forget to um, freeze PSR because right now if you move him and then you go reset PSR, it goes somewhere wrong. So what you want to do is when he's in this base location here, you want to go freeze all and also don't forget to freeze all on this hand as well. So now when you offset him, you can then just reset him back to the position. When you move him, you can reset him back to the position, to its initial position. So that's what the freeze all command is for. It kind of saves the offset into this little kind of virtual null, I guess. So don't forget to do that. And this is kind of, this was my main points that I want to convey with FK and IK. So when you want good arcs, if you want a hand wave, for example, you can now move him up and you can keyframe him waving his arm. And see now the wave is a bit, well, <laughs> this is not the best animation, but you get the point. It's, you can move his shoulder up a bit. As you see, like here, it depends where we, <laughs> very important thing that I forgot. I did not place this guy into a spline null, because if you move this right now, you'll see that there's, where is this? Shoulder of K. Shoulder of K, tilde X. Let us clear the animation for a second. Shoulder of K. Tilde X, okay. So right now, you'll see that it doesn't move together because this shoulder, which is circle, it's not in the spline. So you should really go shift C and set parent to and attach it to this spine rig. And now when you rotate, the arm will move like FK, but you can still move the IK. And you can use this method to uh, have places you want to rotate, like you can set nulls as rotation origins for other objects. So this is a simple technique that I use quite often when I'm reading stuff. Sometimes you want kind of best of both worlds type thing. But sometimes you don't want this, so it's really something you should build depending on your scene. And if you can, stick to either FK animation or IK animation in a single scene. Like just break your animation up into scenes. It'll make your workflow so much easier because no matter, like so often I've been working and everything seemed to be working, it's blending IK, FK, wonderful. And then just when you render it all breaks down for some reason. It's just, yeah, unless you absolutely have to separate the stuff out. Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the kind of setup I have on most of my rigs. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. Go make sure to check out my website. There's some free rigs there. There's some beefy bony rigs and some two-legged walkers. And obviously check out my premium uh, premium rigs as well. Sure, are all free for now. Maybe I'll make some paid ones later, but at the moment it's all free. And yeah, tell me what you think. Tell me what kind of stuff you're interested in and I'll try and make more tutorials about that. Have a good one.